Howdy on with Lux Lives. I think it's time to play a little Seven Days to Die. Alright. Um, hopefully, I've got enough stuff to build this gyrocopter today. Whoop. Well, got enough stuff to fall off my ladder. Get up there. Okay, I believe I needed, um... The chassis. And I needed 125 forged steel. Oh, and my inventory is like crammed full of stuff. So let's uncram some things here. Move these parts and stuff. Oh, what's that? Here you are. I'm sure what that little symbol in the corner was for. Uh, scrap those. Oh no, shoot. Uh, oh, we already did it. <laughs> I was like, no, don't scrap those. I could use those. I don't have steel boots on this guy. on my hotbar. I was like, I was pretty sure I had some electric parts in here somewhere. On the hotbar. Uh, so. Right, I wanted to see. Forge steel. And forge steel. Mmm, not quite there. It's 103. I need 125, but the 50 whatever I just told to make should be enough. So I need uh, leather, duct tape, mechanical parts, and electrical parts. Leather, duct tape, mechanical parts, electrical parts. And I need 12 more bars. Yeah. Uh, oh, I need three wheels. Which I don't think I have any of. Because I put them all on the... Truck. All right, what do we got to have to make wheels? Wheel. Forged iron, scrap polymers, oil, coal, and a bottle of acid. Forged iron, scrap polymers, acid. I've already forgotten. I know, I know coal is one of them. Uh, oil. Do I have any coal just hanging out? Doesn't look like it. Alright, let's go over and get some coal. In the two seconds I've got left of daytime. take the bike uh, so we got to play D&D uh, &D this week um, is this the coal? nope that's one's lead where's my coal? okay um, 
Honestly, it's been so long since we played that I can barely remember what was going on. <laughs> Nobody else could remember either. Um, they uh, they finished up at this uh, giant ziggurat, and uh, so this was this was a session where I was the uh, DM. So they finished up at this uh, dwarven ziggurat, and um, I had forgotten that one of the characters was important at one point. And, um, and so I told the one to remind me when we got back together that, uh, she was important. And so, um, they talked to her a little bit. Um, she wasn't as important as she had been because she was a quest reward. No. She wasn't a quest reward. She was the thing they were supposed to find and bring back. Except that the person they were supposed to bring her back to is now dead. Because of the actions of the characters. And, uh... So, uh... This is all stone. Where's my coal? How much coal did I get? Oh, 712. How much do I need? 10. I think I got enough coal for right now. And so, uh, oh, didn't I? Oh, I don't have enough. Uh, what? Scrap polymers? I'm not even sure. Scrap. Well, that's a conundrum. I don't know what drops scrap polymers. Um, let's head over to that garage area next to my base and see if I can get some from the trash, maybe? I can't think of anything specifically that it comes from. Uh... Oh, this thing. It looks like scrap polymers. No. Uh, here's a wheel. That gave me some scrap polymers. There we go. Park my bike, and uh, so then they work their way back to um, to town, and um, talked to a few people in town, and uh, uh, about what was going on. Bought some supplies and. Traded in, um, traded in some tents that they had brought in. Well, they didn't trade them in. They were seized by the new power. Got a description of the way the town looks now with its uh, ramshackled state torn down and new orderly shelters being built, uh, as well as a palisade around the town since the uh, knights took over. And, uh, um, 
Yeah, that was pretty much all they did. And then uh, we moved over to the final dungeon. There was one interesting part that I debated in my head over the the bad guy for the campaign is a demon uh, named Zan Crown. And the but right now the section they're in the air quotes bad guy is this dude named Ralakai. And uh Ralakai uh Ralakai has a a time limit, I guess, on how he works. And so they um They have uh, uh, not reached any kind of major time limit, but he, uh, on the chart that I had rolled to see where he would be at based on how long the players took, there wasn't enough time for them to um, collect their stuff in town and then get back to um, get back to right and then the wheels. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we're just waiting on the chassis then. Nice. Um, and then get back to the dungeon where Ralakai currently is before Ralakai leaves said dungeon. And I was like, ooh, huh. Technically, you guys are too late to stop Ralakai in this campaign. Uh, or in this campaign book. Um, but I think I'm going to fudge the numbers a little bit and have him there so they can kill him off. Um, he's not important, really, too much. I mean, I guess, I guess they could chase him in the next book when we get to the next book, but um, I don't know when that'll be. Uh, when we finish this one, uh, I, we are going to switch to, I talked with them last night about it. We're going to switch to, uh, Starfinder, um, which I just, uh, got, uh, the books for, and, uh, I like a good sci-fi thing, so I was looking forward to trying that out, and they, uh, have agreed as well uh, that we will give it a shot. Uh, I actually have a similar kind of deal with Starfinder. I bought, um, I bought a Hummel bundle that was Starfinder. Starfinder is basically in space D&D with aliens and, you know, mechs and spaceships and laser guns and that kind of stuff. And, uh, so, um, we play multiple D&D campaigns, regular D&D campaigns, so I thought it would be fun to swap out for a different setting than fantasy. Uh, it's space fantasy, so it's not getting too far away from what we like, but it is in space, and it does have spaceship combat rules and stuff like that, so it's a little different, and... Uh, So, uh, I was thinking that, uh, it could be fun to try that out for a little bit. And the, uh, bundle came with a campaign that's, uh, split into six books. And so the, uh, the D&D campaign that we are currently playing is split into four books. And so I thought we could at least, um, finish this first book. Uh, which technically could just be that. That's it. I mean, you you stop the necromancer from raising the demon, right? Uh, at the end of the first book. And uh, there you go. Um, the book just continues with other things trying to raise the demon. All right. So there's that. Now let's make the gyrocopter. 
I can't do it here. Let's make the gyrocopter. Three minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, let's look at the options for controlling the gyrocopter. Um, well, I do not see gyrocopter controls. I don't really remember how to run the gyrocopter. Um, I've never, I'm not sure I've ever made one before. I've flown them, but other people had made them. So this is the, I think the first one I've made. Might be the second one I've made. Maybe it's the third one I've made and I just don't remember. I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to trying out uh, Starfinder for sure. Um, and I thought we could play through one book of Starfinder, at least, uh, in the campaign that I have. Uh, so we could try that out. I've played one mission that was run by my uh, nephew in the starter kit and thought it was pretty cool. Um, he was a little uh, less understanding, I think, of how... The rules have to be um, tweaked as you're playing, and um, uh, I mean, okay, so the one instance that I felt should have been happening that didn't happen was uh, we found some chemicals on the floor, and my guy has a device that lets him analyze chemicals, and I wanted to analyze the chemicals to see what was in them. But the book says that the players don't know what the chemicals are. And so he refused to let my chemical analyzer analyze those chemicals because the book said the players don't know what those chemicals are. And, uh... You know, so... Oh, man. I'm just, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fly off in this gyrocopter. Uh, other D&D &D news this week. Uh, they had a D&D &D event, I guess. And um, I didn't watch it, but I watched the uh, video of the important part, anyways, to me. And that was the announcement of upcoming D&D &D stuff. Uh, and so... They uh, apparently are getting ready to add a new edition in 2024. Uh, nobody's sure how big of a change that's going to be, though. Uh, because it is, it, they did say it was going to be fully backwards compatible with the current version. And since there's a bunch of stuff to come out yet for the current version, um, they do multiple books a year. And... Uh, they um, said go ahead and get those because the new stuff is not changing the game that much. So you'll still be able to use it with the new stuff. Um, what it sounded like was uh, they're going to take a lot of the rule changes that have happened uh, over the years. and Because 5th uh, uh, edition is uh, 7 years old, I think they said at this point. So it'll be 10 years old in 2024. Um, and uh, so it's probably like eight years old at this point. And um, and D&D &D itself is only, uh, what, 50 years old? Yeah, yeah, because 2024 will be the 50th anniversary. Um, so 2024 is 50th anniversary. They're on their fifth edition, so you know, uh, timetable-wise, they're right at the point where they usually come out with a new version. Although they have had some half versions 
And so that is what they, uh, the people I was reading in chat um, thought was probably going to happen since they said it was so compatible with... Really? You don't want to land on my... Why there and not here? I feel like there's plenty of room for you to land over here. Well, looks like the game crashed. So it just definitely does not want my gyrocopter up there. So I guess we'll put it down here for the moment then. Ooh, all right, here we go. Don't you... I thought... This is why I don't fly a gyrocopter. Oh, so it, it's a takeoff kind of thing. Well, it's not very copter like. How do I adjust the nose? Also very dark. It's not very um I get down. I guess I expected it to fly more like a helicopter instead of a slowly falling plane. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so they um, probably bring in a, a half step, like I said, where they just fix all the issues with the current rule set. Speaking of current rule set, um, uh, I don't remember if I talked about this already. I'm pretty sure I did. Pretty sure I already talked about the uh, invisibility stuff. Whoa, what was that flashes? Uh oh. Are we running out of power? Well. Ay, 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 ay. That's the lights flashing. Yes, I'm not sure exactly how the gyrocopter works. I'm going to have to play with that in the daytime next time because it's too dark to see what's going on. I feel like there should be some kind of controls to it, and I didn't seem to have anything but go forward or not. And the lights are on here. It was weird that this didn't show up in the dark better. Well, 
Or maybe I'll just have to build a runway off the side of here. Um, but yeah, uh, they also talked about, um, uh, I guess the one last thing they said, they uh, are doing a scary adventure, I think is what he said, uh, to a place where d and never gone to before. And uh, wherever it is, the, he said the uh, players should be frightened upon entering because it's that horrific. Uh, so we'll see what that means. Um, new book in January. Uh, they're redoing the way monsters work pretty significantly. And uh, rebalancing the monsters to make them more or less difficult depending on what they were like um, to try and make them match the CR. So, uh, all right. Well, with that, I am going to call it a day. I'm going to plot this guy back down over here. Uh, so be better than the small things. Lean in the light. I will talk to you later.